welcome to this video cassette series, Duran on Quality Planning. The purpose of this first session is to provide you with an idea of where the remaining sessions will be leading you. You'll be taking part in a team project in planning for quality. That project will be job related. It will involve a real life company problem. To carry out that project will require use of modern quality planning methodology. Your planning team will be aided by the video cassettes which follow. An action guide and leader's guide will also help your team to apply the methodology to your planning project. Your team project and others like it are part of your company's broader approach to attaining quality leadership through mastery of the quality planning process. To provide perspective, it is useful at the outset to have a look at how companies manage for attaining quality. The starting point is to define some key words and concepts. The most important key word is quality. Quality has two major definitions. First, Quality means those product features which meet customer needs, on-time delivery, fuel economy. Such product features create customer satisfaction and hence make the product saleable. Product saleability directly affects the job security and the job opportunities of everyone in the company. Second, quality means freedom from product deficiencies. In this sense, Quality means freedom from lost baggage, freedom from medication errors, freedom from billing errors, freedom from power outages, freedom from inoperable goods. Product deficiencies create customer dissatisfaction. These deficiencies add to company costs and to customers' costs as well. These costs also directly affect job security and job opportunities. While defining quality, we have used two other key words, product and customer. So let's define them. Product includes goods or anything which is produced. Ballpoint pens and cameras are products, but so are invoices, research reports, bids for business, financial reports, and product specifications product also includes services. Service is work performed for someone else. It includes work performed for sale to outsiders, transportation, communication, entertainment. Service also includes work performed for people inside your company, payroll preparation, recruitment of new employees, plant maintenance. A customer is anyone who is impacted by your company's products or processes. Customers may be external to the company or internal. External customers are not members of your company, but they are impacted by its products. Clients, government regulators, and the general public are all examples of external customers. Internal customers are members of your company. They are often called customers, even though they are not clients. To manage for quality, we make use of three well-known managerial processes. In managing for finance, these processes are called financial planning, financial control, and financial improvement. In managing for quality, these same processes are called quality planning, quality control, and quality improvement. These processes interact with each other as shown on the Duran Trilogy diagram. In this model, the horizontal scale is time. The vertical scale is product deficiencies, or cost of poor quality. What goes up is bad. It all starts with quality planning. Quality planning is the activity of determining customer needs and then developing the products and processes required to meet those needs. Once planning is complete, 
the resulting process is turned over to the operating forces. Their job is quality control, to run the process and meet the quality goals. As operations get underway, we frequently find that the process contains deficiencies. On the model, these deficiencies show up as chronic waste. In this example, the cost of poor quality amounts to 20% of sales. That waste is inherent in the process. The process was planned that way. So the waste goes on and on until a quality improvement comes along and reduces it. How often have you felt, as a result of quality deficiencies, that you were up to your hips and alligators? I know exactly how that feels. Alligators are a lot like quality planning deficiencies. They're all over the place. And if you're not extremely careful, one or more of them might get you when you least expect it. Past methods of quality planning have created many quality deficiencies. As a result, we have numerous chronic wastes. Each of these chronic wastes can be regarded as being one of my toothy friends here. The operating managers are up to their hips and alligators too. However, the managers have a means of dealing with these critters. The quality improvement process eliminates alligators one by one, project by project. Now, suppose that the managers proceed to get rid of all existing alligators. Is that the end of product deficiencies? Definitely not. The reason is that we have not changed the planning process. A deficient quality planning process can be thought of as a hatchery which produces new alligators. Quality improvement can eliminate the existing alligators one by one. However, to stop the production of new alligators requires shutting down that hatchery. Up to now, I've been talking about quality and the sense of deficiencies. However, there is also that other form of quality, product features, which create product saleability. If we were to analyze quality planning with respect to product features, we would still find our planning process to be deficient. Many of our existing products lack some of the features required to meet customer needs. Other products meet customer needs, but not as well as competitors' products. Once again, we would reach the conclusions that, first, the inadequacies in product features are inherent in the quality planning process. In a sense, they were planned that way. Second, clearing up the existing inadequacies will not eliminate future inadequacies since the planning process has not been changed. The hatchery is still in operation. The damage due to deficient quality planning has been and is considerable. An important part of that damage is the lack of competitiveness in the marketplace. The effect is that sales income is reduced. Another important part of the damage is the resulting chronic cost of poor quality. In the United States, about a third of the work done consists of redoing what was done previously. Collectively, the damage done to sales and cost adds up to a problem of major magnitude. This damage will go on and on so long as this alligator hatchery remains in operation. How can we shut down the hatchery? There have been two principal schools of thought. One of these schools has emphasized motivating the planners. The messages to the planners have been in such forms as stating that quality has top priority, or in other ways, attempting to motivate the planners to do a better job. Many companies have followed that school of thought. It hasn't brought them the results they hoped for. There are some obvious reasons for the lack of results. In part, the planners resent the implication of blame. Their defenses are valid. We are not given enough resources. Our database is inadequate. We are not allowed enough time to finish the planning. Another major reason for the lack of results has been the lack of specifics, the lack of agreement on what the planner should do that is different from what they have been doing. However, the most fundamental reason for the lack of results has been the effort to apply a remedy without first identifying the ailment. The second major school of thought emphasizes discovering the reasons for the existence of the alligator hatchery before applying remedies. Once we address the question, why does the hatchery exist, some clear answers emerge. Now, why does the hatchery exist? The prime reason is that most quality planning is done by experienced amateurs. 
People who have never been trained in modern concepts, methods, skills, and tools of planning for quality. These experienced amateurs include the upper managers. But why do we use amateurs? We use amateurs because we usually assign responsibility for planning on a functional basis. For example, the responsibility for design of the purchase order, a product, and of the purchasing procedure, a process, is typically assigned to the purchasing department. That department manager then has the problem of planning for multiple parameters, technology, cost, schedule, productivity, and also quality. Those assigned to do the planning are likely to be expert in the purchasing function, but seldom expert in the how to plan for quality. What applies to the expert in the purchasing function also applies to experts in other functions, accounting, electronic circuit design, metal cutting, marketing. Another reason for the existence of the hatchery is that the planners have not used the expertise of the quality specialist. In many manufacturing companies, there are quality professionals, reliability engineers, quality engineers. These professionals are usually well-trained in modern methodology for planning for quality. In such companies, the organization structure usually provides for these professionals to assist the line engineers and managers to retain the overall planning responsibility. However, this arrangement has some built-in obstacles. There are debates over jurisdiction. There are personality differences. Such obstacles have often discouraged use of the available in-house consulting assistance. Companies have been testing out various ways to shut down the hatchery. There have been two major options. The first option is to require the planners to make use of quality specialists as consultants. The second option is to train the planners in how to use modern methodology and planning for quality. In other words, train the amateurs to be professionals. The use of quality specialists has been widely tested in the United States. Training in quality planning has been widely tested in Japan. The feedback of results strongly suggest that the best results have been achieved by training the planners in how to use modern quality planning methodology. The quality specialist can play a very valuable role in this training. Now what is meant by modern quality planning methodology? It consists of a structured, participative approach. Mostly, this approach is not new. It has grown out of ways long used by planners. You will have a look at the main features of this structured, participative approach but first, it is instructive to look at a case example. When Ford Motor Company began planning for the Ford Taurus and Mercury Sable, they recognized that to attain a competitive level of quality would require a new approach. In the past, design, engineering, manufacturing, marketing, and other functions carried out compartmentalized planning activities in an iron sequence. There is little interaction among the functions. The opportunity for mistakes and waste was enormous. An early warning of potential downstream problems was rare. Ford abandoned the sequential approach in favor of a structured planning approach, which would require participation of all impacted functions simultaneously. What evolved was a cross-functional planning team of managers and specialists under the coordination of the Car Product Development Group. This team, known as Team Taurus, made it possible to share and coordinate planning information in new ways. In addition to discovering the needs of the ultimate customers, the fleet owners and consumers, the Taurus designers also discovered the needs of other customers, sales, purchasing, manufacturing, legal, the service department, and the needs in turn of their customers, including the insurance companies and service shops. So the emerging design responded to many of these needs, such as the insurance company's need to contain collision insurance costs. Engraved markings at critical locations under the hood facilitate front-end realignment and crash repair, enabling reduced collision insurance rates, and the need to anticipate changes in federal requirements which would affect the car's design. The Office of General Counsel determined that high-mount stop lamps would be required in the future, though perhaps not in the first model year. 
Ford incorporated the feature a year before it became mandatory. When it did become mandatory, Ford did not have to make a last minute design change. Perhaps the most novel element of the Taurus planning was the team's approach to analyzing and addressing the competition. The team identified some of the cars they considered best in class in the world. This list included more than two dozen cars, American, European, and Japanese. The team then developed a list of everything the user looks at, feels, and hears, and experiences as function, the hundreds of details that contribute to the user's perception of car quality. The list included over 400 features. For each of those 400 plus features, the team identified which of the two dozen cars was best in class with respect to that feature. The team's goal for that feature was to equal or surpass best in class. Each of those goals gave rise to a planning project. One project focused on the effort needed to lift the hood. A Japanese model was best in class, requiring nine pounds of force. The best-in-class goal became eight pounds. The Taurus body engineers overachieved, reducing the lifting force to just seven pounds. Another project focused on heater discharge temperature. One of Ford's own models was best-in-class, 110 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 minutes after a cold winter start. The goal was 111 degrees under the same conditions. The goal was met. By the time of the car's introduction, Ford reported that for over 80% of those 400 plus features, they had achieved best in class. In terms of saleability, the Taurus was a stunning success. The styling, performance, and detail proved very appealing to the buyers. With that case example in mind, let us return to the structured participative approach. The approach is based on a series of steps. First, identify who are the customers. Next, discover the customer needs in their language. Then, translate those needs into your language. Also, establish units of measure and the means for measuring quality. Next, develop product features which respond to customer needs. Then, optimize product design to minimize the combined costs for you and your customer. Next, develop processes which can produce those product features under operating conditions. Then, optimize those process features. In addition, prove that the process is capable of meeting product and process goals. Finally, transfer the plan to the operating forces for implementation. Modern quality planning requires these steps to be carried out using a structured approach. Those steps must be followed in the prescribed sequence. Certain kinds of analysis must be carried out, such as the Pareto analysis. Quantitative quality goals must be established. Methods of measuring quality must be established. Then those methods must be used to measure the results against the quality goals. Specific quality planning tools are mandated. Flow diagrams, spreadsheets, formal documentation is mandated. The rationale behind this mandated structure is that it contributes to thoroughness. The documentation simplifies review by those impacted. It also reduces the risks of overlooking, forgetting, underemphasizing. An additional mandate is participation. Modern quality planning requires that those who are impacted must participate in the planning. The rationale is that such participation provides early warning of trouble ahead. It also contributes to optimization, to assuring that the sum of the costs is at a minimum. In addition, participation fosters the team spirit needed to achieve organizational unity. The modern approach to quality planning is largely an outgrowth of practices which have long been used by planners. 
Those steps in quality planning have been invented and reinvented over and over again. Spreadsheets, flow diagrams, PERT charts, Gantt charts, arrow diagrams, and other systematic documentation have been around for a long time. So has the concept of participation. However, the past practice has been to leave it all on a voluntary basis. The planners could use the methodology or not, as they chose. What is new is the mandating of all this methodology. What is new is training the planners in how to use this methodology effectively and efficiently. The sessions which follow will explain in detail modern quality planning methodology. The series of video cassettes, together with the action guide and the leader's guide, are the means of helping your team through its quality planning project. Each project tackled will bring your team members a step closer to mastery over the quality planning process. As your team works its way through its project, you will find that the structured, participative approach is time consuming. It takes time to attend the team meetings, to secure the needed information, to conduct the analyses, to resolve the differences, and to prepare the documentation. As a result, the planning cycle is usually longer than it is for the traditional unstructured approach. If structured participative planning is so much work and takes so long, why do companies adopt it? They do so because the overall work is reduced and the overall time is shortened. Here again, it is convenient to use a model. Under the traditional unstructured approach, the planning time is comparatively short. However, the overall time is long due to the crises and problems which emerge during execution. Under the modern approach, the planning time is longer. However, the overall time is shorter because the execution is relatively more free from crises and problems. What will happen once your team has finished its project? Usually there's an evaluation of the planning approach and an adjustment before broader application. When your company embarked on this structured approach, it did so expecting that the approach will fit its needs. The company also realizes that the early projects are a test. That test will have to be evaluated in terms of the results achieved compared to the effort required. The collective experience of the teams, your team, and others will suggest mid-course corrections before broader application. As experience is acquired, your planning skills will be honed. For your company, this planning experience will help to contribute to competitiveness in quality, competitiveness in costs, product saleability, customer satisfaction, and quality leadership. Meeting those company goals contributes to meeting some essential goals for you. Job security, quality makes sales, sales makes jobs. Job opportunities. The quality leader becomes the market leader. Job satisfaction. The exhilaration derived from membership on the team. The winning team. Quality has two major definitions. Quality means those product features which meet customer needs, Quality also means freedom from product deficiencies. Product consists of both goods and services. Goods are physical things. Service is work performed for someone else, either within or outside of your organization. A customer is anyone who is impacted by your products or processes, again, either inside or outside of your organization. Managing for quality uses processes similar to those used in managing for finance.
quality planning, quality control, and quality improvement. In the alligator analogy, where each alligator represents a chronic quality problem, the quality improvement process can eliminate alligators one by one, project by project. However, a deficient planning process is a hatchery for new problems. To stop new alligators from emerging, the hatchery must be shut down. The most effective way of shutting down the hatchery is to train the planners in how to use modern quality planning methodology. This methodology follows a structured, participative approach. The videotapes and the printed guides will help guide you through each of these steps in the planning process. From Duran Institute, Helen Blackiston will introduce and summarize each step in the planning process. But there remains the matter of designing for process control, the means for setting and adjusting the process to consistently meet product and process goals. Dr. Duran will present the planning methodology and managerial concepts. If the mandate comes from a client, you must comply or you lose the contract. Bob Hoofstel will familiarize you with some of the pertinent quality planning tools. At this point, we can set preliminary process goals. For soldering the core, the goal is joints that don't leak. For installing the fan, the goal is get the fan on the shaft. And for adding coolant, the goal is a full coolant system. Tom Heisinger will provide some examples. Precision has to do with how close the shots are to each other. Here are the results of my efforts earlier today. And I'll return in session 15 with an overall summary of the series. Now, you're ready to begin your planning project. The first step in shutting down the hatchery is identify who are the customers. So that will be the subject of the next session. Good luck.